Hey guys, what's up? I'm Naisha Arrington. I'm here at John George Restaurant. Chef JG himself has invited me here to cook through a brand new dish, a swordfish villanese with his executive chef Noah. Uh, let's go. Welcome to, to our kitchen. Happy to be here, Chef. Chef Noah is our chef at the Fulton down at the Pier 17. Okay, wow. The Howard You project. No big deal or anything. <laughs> a lot of fish. That's why we're here. So today we uh, like to introduce somebody else, swordfish. Beautiful. 250, 300 pounds. Never buy a whole swordfish really, because it's, it's a lot to handle. You need a lot of room to store it. So essentially this is just one side of the fish, correct? Yeah. You have two sides. So this is like a quarter, but it probably goes up to here. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, swordfish, um, if you cook it too much, there's a tendency of getting dry. Sure, you know, absolutely. Like overcooking a piece of veal or pork. But now I find a technique but treating like a like a veal mayonnaise, but it's a swordfish mayonnaise. Wow. So we cut them. Now tell me if I'm cutting it too big or too small, because it's your... Little thinner. Little thinner. Touch we, thinner. We chef. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, so why do we cut it uh, this size? I mean, it's going to be breaded, so we that's going to add another layer. I think yours is probably better than mine, no? Yeah, definitely. Nice, nice you went. Thank you, Chef. You're Noah. hired. Yes. Come on, chefs. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> So here we have uh, flour, all purpose, some eggs and uh, some panko. I think you grind the panko a little uh, fine, don't know? We do buzz this up in a food processor. Not too fine. If you go too long, it'll turn basically into the flour. So still want some texture to it, but panko that you get out of the bag is a little too coarse. I mean, the meat is very similar to, I would say, tuna. Totally. So, yeah, it's a fatty fish. I mean, really, like when you compare to a pork loin. Yeah, no, it looks like a pork. Pork right. or veal from the... Let's call it the veal of the ocean. But I think we need to be three to do this. I do the flour. Okay. You do the eggs. No, you do the panko. The panko. Sounds like a plan. Ready? Let's have some fun. One, two, three. Let's go. I mean, this definitely makes the job go a lot quicker. Sport fish. Uh, we try to work with uh, only with small boats. Okay. On this one is uh, between travels between Virginia and Montauk. It's kind of line coat for sure. You know, it's difficult to, to fish those uh, fish. Uh, yes. In. Uh, it's gonna take a team of three to pull in a 300 pound fish. Right? I know, I know. <laughs> um, we try to work with um, only with a small boat. They leave in the morning at five or six, they fish all day, they come back at six, at two, three in the afternoon. Versus big boats who are leaving uh, on Monday, they come back on Friday right. on four days, five days. Right. The time he hits the market, it's a week old. So we try to really work with small boats. So here's our Milanese. Uh, Beautiful. To, uh, Could have fooled me. It looks like a pork loin for sure. <laughs> So we're making a chili ferment, a jalapenos, orange, and salt. Very simple, but it's a, a staple item, a base to a lot of our seasoning. JG, of course, he taught me everything I know, but... Um, so why do you choose jalapenos? We choose jalapenos because we can kind of control the heat a little bit uh, more than a lot of other peppers. Um, it's not extremely spicy, uh, but it offers a good amount of heat, good amount of seasoning. We blend it with orange peel, orange zest, Remove all the, the pith, yes. so that all the white comes out. Um, no bitterness. So for this chili ferment, um, why do you choose to use sort of the peel or the outside as opposed to the flesh or some of the juice? I learned that dish, I mean, I learned that uh, flavor in Japan. You know, it would be too liquid. We're looking for something uh, just, the orange is just for the flavor. Yes. In, uh, in Japan, they use chilies on, uh, on yuzu, zest on it. Yes. On the fermented. It's my, one of my favorite condiments. It's one of my favorites yuzu. also. It's the best. I used to make one at my restaurant also with, with tangerine. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, the chili ferment's not necessarily traditional in a, in a Milanese. Yes. It's more just brown butter capers. Sure. Uh, we added this just because we like uh, a little bit of heat. We want the first bite to be as exciting as the last bite. So not too, not too pureed, right? Still want a little, little bit of pulp. When it gets, uh, you know, the color comes back. Smell, smell, you can smell that's very, wow. very aromatic. Very Beautiful spicy. Texture. Yes. But in 24 hours, that flavor of scratch is completed. Thames up a little bit. Right. Voila. So this is just blended. This is fermented for 24 hours, not strained yet. And then this is strained. Before, very sharp. After, and once you mix it with a little butter on the white it's wine. It's almost elegant, yeah. Excellent. So here for the spring, we're using as a garnish asparagus. I think Chef Noah is using uh, squash in the winter. Use a lot of different ideations of this 
dish, so asparagus, grilled romaine, honey nut squash, very, very good, short season. Yeah, spring is all about kind of fresh, simple, acid. Green. Yeah. So with all the sort of ideations in the swordfish milanese, do you have a favorite? Are you like a spring guy or a winter guy? I go with whatever JG likes. Best. Okay, fair enough, chef. I like the green stuff. Yes. For you know, spring summer. For sure. I remember when I arrived in New York in '86. It was uh, most of the vegetables coming from uh, California or from flying in from uh, in from Europe. Is that now right? They, yes. In '86, was you go to Union Square, it was sure. apple potato. That's yeah. it. I remember the, the farmer came to us with a seed catalog. Why do you want us to grow? I said the entire catalog. We want everything. On the day, now we have, you go to the market, you have five color beets. All right. Are we ready? A la cuisine. Yeah. Okay, so we restart with the reduced white wine, correct? Yeah. yeah have, have a glass, have a cup. Perfect. You have to save some for drinking, so. And then we're gonna do a brown butter. You can put one, uh, one of the cubes. Okay. So you're gonna cook it brown until it has that a hazelnut uh, flavor. Okay, sort of a nutty. Nutty, exactly. You always want to take it a little bit further than you think. Also, it should look like uh, black coffee. We have some thyme, so rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, parsley. When we're gonna season our. You want to make sure there's milk solids in the uh, in the butter that you're mixing it, so it doesn't catch on the bottom and burn. You want to make sure you just. Getting those alpha there. The milk solids is what kind of flavors and sure. gives you that like brown nuttiness. Yeah, after they sort of caramelize and yeah. impart that flavor. I'm gonna put the herbs, be careful, it's gonna splatter a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. So we're really flavoring the butter. I love that smell. The aroma is amazing. Let it sit. Burn was it, chili ferment. That's the sauce. And then we're gonna add some chopped parsley on the end and uh, some um, capers. Beautiful. Oh, mixez-vous. It's mix in French. Yeah. <laughs> That's a JG thing, guys. So what are we doing next? We are cooking the swordfish. Yes. Uh, we're gonna basically shallow fry it in a pan. We're yes. using uh, grapeseed oil. Uh, you want to kind of bring the oil up to a smoke point before you drop it in. Why grapeseed oil? Grapeseed oil uses uh, neutral oil with yes. a very high smoke point. So it's not going to really flavor the fish too much. Sure. And it allows us to get a nice color on the fish, cook it pretty hard without burning. Makes sense. You conceptualize this dish? Everything we do, we work on, work on it with the team. It's never, never really one person. You know, we had beef, pork, fish, etc., vegetables. And then now going to a fish restaurant, I'm trying to think of kind of conceptually, you know, what could translate from a meat dish to a fish dish. And this is kind of something that I really, really like. So we get our swordfish for somebody we trust a lot that we use at the Fulton. Blue Ribbon is the company. Awesome. Warren is kind of my go-to there. Is shout out from, to Warren. Yeah, shout out to Warren. Gave us some great swordfish today. Nice golden brown. You don't want to overcook it too much or overcook it at all. I just had the, the asparagus, huh? Yeah. Because you're going to be ready before moi. So a little olive oil. Okay. Just the asparagus. And I feel small fish is like meat a little bit, huh? you have to rest it a little bit, you know? Totally. The juice is there, nice. Redistribute. Probably a minute and a half on each side. I mean, not very, the jumbo, you leave it a little longer. You can flip it and uh, baste it. Just be careful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. It's better than me. Excellent. I love this. How are you feeling about taking care of a 55,000 square foot uh, food hall? Jeez, what a, that's, what a project. So excited to see it. Chef, I'll, I'll come work for you any time. I love this. I'm way more comfortable on this side. Are you kidding me? We need you in the spring. Okay. You so, could use this uh, Milanese technique with other fish, like monkfish. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That'd be lovely. Um, and as soon as it comes out of the pan, you want to season it with salt while the oil is hot, so it kind of absorbs into the fish. And you can also eat it medium, medium rare if you like. Amazing. That's how my dad likes it. I wish I could get my dad there. My dad's a well done guy. Plating time? C'est bon? Tout bien. <laughs> I'll play one, you play one. Sounds yeah. like a plan, chef. Yeah, we go for about eight ounces total. The, the size of the swordfish loin changes a lot. You know, sometimes we get in very bigger fish. Sure, towards so the we'll tail, have, it's smaller or... Yeah, El Milanese is actually kind of translates in, in Italian to uh, elephant ear. 
So when you have a one big piece, it kind of oh, looks cool. like a elephant ear. It looks like an elephant ear. Totally does. Uh... Yeah, so now two elephant ears. Then we do the sauce. Again, like good, good amount of sauce. Chef, don't be, don't be shy. Uh, no shy, no shyness. Um, that looks delicious. Yeah, sauce makes the dish. So you don't wanna, you wanna have too dry or anything. But sure. and then we finish it with more parsley, a lot of parsley. Some lemon. Lemon. Voila. Voila. Yeah. Voila, c'est bon. Pars parsley bay. It's okay. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. cool. Uh, she wins. I don't know. I'm trying to learn. She can work down the fall. She wins on the beginning gotta, with the cuts. So Butter it up, you know? Together. Wow. Mm. It's so juicy. Wow. This is amazing. It's so juicy. Good, right? Very flavorful. Oh my gosh. Mm. This is lovely. It's amazing how you retain the juice. Oh, yeah. the flavor. And it's it's beautiful that it's a fish actually, right? And you don't have to like be forced to do the pork and you can think outside of the box and be almost progressive with the ideas in cooking. It's amazing. Yeah, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, right? We want to cook food that's that's good. We want to cook food that's tasty. Bravo. Amazing. I look forward to seeing this on the menu and come visiting you guys there. Well, thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the visit. And thank you for of course, my us. pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Val my, val my, my Valentine. We're Valentines together. Awesome. <laughs>